How are you guys? Good. So we we will see interactions or change. It, this is fine. I'm okay. Um, you will see Pastor Riz talking and then Mike and Wang. So mag magpapalit palitan kami para hindi naman boring. And hopefully, by the way, you saw on that page that you have the checklist on the bottom. It actually has a phone number. So towards the end of the day, we have a Q&A session. So we want the Q&A to be anonymous, right? So type in your question and send it to that number. We will choose the questions tonight to answer them, right? So while we're discussing here today, some questions will come up in your mind, right? And when you do, just type it away and then send that question to us. So anyway, we're going to be talking about the first pillar, which is purpose, letter P. Proverbs 24, 3 to 5, let's start there. And you guys are familiar from Wisdom Church, familiar with this, these verses, right? Three, it says, through wisdom, a house is built. I'm going to stop there for a minute because I want to highlight this phrase. There we go. Hi, uh, pointer. I want to highlight this phrase, a house is built. Now, hopefully, when you started your family or when you got married, this is one of your purposes, Right? At least it's one in, in your mind, you want to build a home. Is that correct? Yes. Right? You want to build a home. You want to build a family. Right? In this verse, this is what he's talking about. Through wisdom from the Lord, your family is built. Your marriage is built. And what else? And by understanding, it is established. Mike talked about foundations here today. Establishing a home, you need understanding. And then, of course, by knowledge, the rooms are filled. So knowledge, wisdom, and understanding are the three main things for you to be able to establish and build a family and build a home. Now, listen, there's a promise here. When you do that, your home will be filled with precious and pleasant riches. Now, we're not just talking about material riches here. We're talking about abundance in every aspect. Right? Abundance in your marriage, in your relationship. Abundance in the lives of your children. This is what we're talking about. So, you know what? First of all, I want to honor you for being here today. Clap your hands, Naman, for everyone. Right? Because, listen, knowingly or knowingly, you came here. This is actually an action of faith from you saying, Lord, I want wisdom. I want knowledge. I want understanding for my family and for my future family. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. That's what you're here for. Maybe hindi mo lang alam, pero ngayon alam mo na. Right? You're here to gain that knowledge and understanding and wisdom from the Lord, from the Word of God. And when you do, that's the promise. Oh, good. Nawala. Pleasant riches in your family. Something's happening in our tech. And that's solved in Jesus' name. There you go. Precious and pleasant riches. Okay, so purpose. Let's talk about purpose real quick. You are made for a purpose individually, right? You mga single, John, when God created you, before he created the universe, he created you. And you already have that purpose from the Lord. Now, when you got married, that purpose did not disappear, right? Tandaan yan, it did not go away. That purpose and your spouse's purpose come together and it makes one purpose. So therefore, you need to understand that there's a purpose in your marriage. It's not just to be happy. I know you married your spouse because you love them, right? You love your spouse and, and you want to be together every single day. That's one reason, right? But that's not the only reason. Having kids is not the only reason. Having a job and provide for your family is not the only purpose of getting married. There's a deeper purpose for your marriage. And that's between you and the Lord to find out, Lord, what is the purpose of our marriage? This is not by accident. This did not happen by accident. God had blessed your marriage, and there is, again, a purpose. Matthew 5.13, I'm just going to go through this very quickly. It says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anyone except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. I want to highlight this phrase, you are the salt of the earth. And I'm sure you guys are familiar with this. Christians, you know, you hear this a lot. I, you are the salt and the light of the world. 
It becomes so familiar that, okay, yeah, I get that. Do we really get it? Do we really get it when you say, I am the salt and the light of the world? Meaning you're not just limited in your own home. You are to go out there to bring taste, to bring light, to bring meaning outside of your family, outside of your marriage. Meron kang purpose outside of your marriage to be a salt, to be a light, to be to bring meaning in the lives of other people as well. Now, I know for some of you is already thinking, Nako, pwede bang ayusin ko muna tong problema ko bago, bago ko isipin ang problema ng iba? Some people are thinking that way. And maybe most people are thinking that way. Let me just look, solve my problems and issues first in my marriage, in my children, before I even start thinking about other people's issues in life. But it doesn't work that way in the kingdom. In the kingdom, if you want to solve what's inside, look outside. Be a solution outside and then your internal issues will follow. Take care of God's business and God will take care of your business. And that also shows up in your marriage, inside and outside of your marriage. 2 Corinthians 3.18, it says, And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Okay, I know this is kind of deep. And let me just highlight some things here. It says, Beholding all the glory of the Lord. It says, We all. Behold the glory of the Lord. Meaning, when you walk outside of this auditorium, when you walk outside in the mall, in the grocery, in a bank, you are beholding the glory of God. You are carrying the glory of God. And it says, from one degree, you move from one degree, from one degree of glory to another. So this applies to your marriage as well. You move from one degree of glory to another. You should see your marriage one year from now, it should be better. One glory to another. Two years from now, it should be much better. Right? Now, if that's not your case right now, it's okay. And that's why you're here. Hopefully, you get something from this today that you can apply to your marriage and take your marriage from one glory to another. From one level of glory to another. Proverbs 29, 18, it says, Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he who keeps the law, the word of God, right, is blessed. That's bottom line. Now, we're talking about purpose and then talking about vision and dreams and goals here. Listen, for those who have been married for five years and more, right? A lot of times, and I see this, maybe not you guys, right? Maybe outside of this crowd. Um, I see that some marriages are boring or lost the excitement. They're not in love, quote-unquote, in love anymore, right? Do you see that around you? Real talk, right? Issues are starting to come up. Challenges are becoming harder and harder, right? And they lost the spark, right? Wala nang spice. Wala nang spark. And listen, the vision and the dream is... One of the ways to keep that marriage going in such a way that you are always motivated. You're always excited to do things together, right? Learning things together. I'm just looking at my time, okay. Habakkuk 2.2, it says, And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. So the Lord is the author of the idea of writing your visions and your goals. 
Now, I want to encourage you couples, if you have not done this ever, you can start tomorrow, right? Go, go to a coffee shop and start sitting down, start talking and, and, and ask the Lord and say, Lord, what is your dream for us? What is your vision for our marriage? What is your purpose for our marriage? What do you have in store for us for this year and the next coming years, right? And get that and what do you need to do? Write it down. God says, write it down. It's not going to just be in here. Write it down so that you can share. You're getting ready to say something. Oh, come, come, come on, come on up, come on up. I'm, I'm come so, on. Like, so many things <laughs> I want to say about this. Now, Pedro, you have two minutes. I have two minutes. Okay, Go. so, so uh, Pastor Sal's main, uh, who here like regularly come together with their spouse and vision and goal setting and write things down? Who does that? Not much. Okay, so I'm going to give you a warning by actually when you do this. A warning. A warning. Okay. Bagsak nito away. <laughs> Most of the time, bagsak is away. Why? Yes. Because you, and for all this time, you know, uh, say uh, Gary here has been thinking of this, this is what I want to do, and then we have Jade here has this, and they come together, and now they're not, not thinking, the they're, they're not seeing eye to eye, and bagsak away. How do we know? Experience. <laughs> Even yes. when we're doing it's regular experience, you know why? The spiritual reason why is because the enemy sees when husband and wife come together in agreement with God's vision, it's very hard to stop. It's very powerful. It's very powerful. So the spirit of strife comes in. Division comes. Division comes. So when you expect it, you have to look your wife in the eye and say, you're not my enemy. Satan, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> because it's the enemy. You have to understand who your enemy is. And spouse, what can you offend? Yeah, what can you offend? Like, for example, yeah, it's never your spouse. Say, look at your spouse. Say, you're not my enemy. Yes. You're not my enemy. Yes. It's the enemy is always the demons, Satan's allegiance. Yeah. Right? That's the enemy influencing your spouse. When she starts speaking things that makes absolutely no sense, she said, Demonyo to. <laughs> <laughs> I know already. Hindi ikaw, demonyo no, 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 hindi siya, ha? But demonyo ang nag influence sa kanya. <laughs> if, you don't un- okay. if you don't understand this, then siya ang kaaway mo, which makes absolutely no sense. Does this yeah. make sense so far, church? My two minutes is up. I have so He's much more to say. He's going way ahead of, of the topic, but... It makes sense, right? And listen, and, and you know what? That's actually a good point. What you can do, especially, you know, I love those newly couple, newly married couples, right? You can, you can start with a very good start with everything that you're going to be learning today, right? Start with buy a notebook, a nice one, a good one, right? And we had this, I don't know where it went, that started in 2002, Okay, we have it. Every year, every quarter, we update that. So that could be like your vision and goals notebook for your marriage that could last for decades. So alagaan yo, but it's just so good to see what you wrote down and then years after you saw, like, you know what? We wrote this two years ago. We wrote this a year ago. And it's just so inspiring. Again, it, it makes you to bond together, unite together stronger because you're working on things together, right? You're working on the same vision, the same goal together. And it's something that, again, God is the author of that, right? So keep that in mind um, as, as you go through this journey in your vision and your goals. Now, let's talk about partnership real quick because under the purpose is, is partnership. Genesis 2, 18, it says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now, Mike uh, read this um, a few minutes ago or a while ago in the first uh, setting. Now, let me read a few more, okay? Because this is talking about God recognizing the need, not even Adam, right? God recognized the need for a partner. 
Now, let's continue. 1 Peter 3, 7, it says, Likewise, husbands, talking to you, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since you are joint heirs of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Okay, I want to point out a few things here. It says, husbands. Uh, who are husbands here? Yes. Okay, listen up, listen up. It says, honor your wives, right? Honor your wives. Okay, can I just handle this real quick? It says weaker vessel. Are we weaker vessels? Yes. No. <laughs> Pero bumawi si God, sabi niyo, as joint heirs. Okay, when you say joint heir, when you say joint account in a bank, meaning if there's 100,000 pesos there, both of you have equal access to that account, right? Equal rights, equal access to that account, equal control to that account. That's what you mean when you say joint heir. You have equal access, equal control, equal rights. And this is what marriage is as well, right? So you need to understand that. And again, husbands, you need to honor your wives because so that your prayers may not be hindered. Ooh. Yes. yes. Women, say yes. yes. Come on, wives, right? And, and it's there. It's in the Bible, I'm not going to deny that. Ecclesiastes 4, 9, 12. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and has no, no one, not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Okay, you guys are very familiar with this. Bottom line, what it's saying is two is better than one, right? Being married is better than being single. That's what the Bible said. But of course, you know what? Again, we're not generalizing this to every single person on the earth, right? It's between you and the Lord and what your purpose and calling here on earth. Right? But in general, I would say most, right, two is better than one. Being married is better than being single. I want to read the NLT version of Ecclesiastes 4.12. It says, a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer, meaning two, again, is better than one. However, I like this one. It says, three are even better, it's even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Who is that third cord that we're talking about here? God. I hope that that was established in the beginning, right? That it's your relationship with the Lord first. When that is established, then your marriage will be established. You cannot establish this without establishing your relationship with God. Right? Because this relationship right here, God, you, and your spouse, it's the three cord. And this is what makes a marriage strong. And then Genesis 3.16, it says, To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. I, I don't think that's in your book, but I just added that. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Okay, I want to highlight this because, again, talking about equality in marriage, right? This was, um, God said this to Adam and Eve, actually specifically to Eve, after the fall. After the fall, God said to Eve that your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Now, the culture, the tradition of man being here and woman being here happened because of the fall. The culture, the tradition that only man can lead, only man can preach, only man can be a pastor is actually a result of sin. Is actually a result of the fall. Before the fall, they were joint, equal, 
together in partnership. Partnership is also a spiritual connection. 2 Corinthians 6.14, it says, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? This makes a lot of sense to me. Does it make sense to you? Parang sinasabi lang ni God, oil cannot be mixed with water. Light cannot be mixed with darkness. A citizen of the kingdom cannot be with a citizen of darkness. You were already moved to the kingdom of God. Now, the thing is, when you get connected with someone who is from the darkness, from the kingdom of darkness, what happens? It's either you move here, right? Or this person moves here. But what happens most of the time? Come on, real talk. <laughs> Darkness overcome the light. <laughs> well, not, oh, not that way, but what I'm saying is what happens is you, this person from the kingdom actually moves to the darkness for some reason. To the confusion. Okay, when we talk about darkness, we're, just, we're not just talking about you being evil, right? What we're talking about here is you moving to not knowing the word anymore. Ignorance. Darkness is ignorance. Not knowing the word, not knowing God, not having that intimate relationship with the Lord. And again, I mean, this, this makes a lot of sense, but please don't get into a relationship Hoping, begging, praying that one of these days your boyfriend, your girlfriend is going to move to the other side. I'm not sugarcoating, am I? Is that okay? Am I stepping on toes? That's okay. We're going to pray for those toes later, right? But save yourselves. You know, marriage alone, marriage between two. Christians alone is already challenging. You don't want to add another factor of not having the same faith. Right? That's a bigger issue right there from the very beginning. You're, you haven't even started. It's kind of like in a race. You haven't even started the race and you have been given a backpack with a 20 kilogram thing on your back already. That's, that's the kind of disadvantage you're taking on when you get into a relationship and marry someone who is not in the same faith with you. Real talk, people, right? Don't go there. Don't even go there. Eh, engage na po kami. Di pa kayo kasal. Humabol pa. Sorry. I'm a mom. I'm just talking like a mom here today, okay? So hear me out. Hear me out. No. You know what? Um, I'm going to call on a couple today. Uh, and I want, they're, they're going to be sharing their, their testimony of their journey of faith. This is talking about the importance of having the same spiritual connection so may I ask uh, Aaron and Noreen to come down here, please. Woo, give them a round of applause. We need microphone. Two mics. Yes. While they're coming down, you guys getting anything? Getting? Learning? Learning? Yes? Yes. Okay. So, yep. So they have two minutes to share. No, no, no. <laughs> Once again to them. The floor is yours. I'll sit here. Okay lang ba? Sige lang. Of course. <laughs> oh, you know what? Dito na lang ako, but I can see them. Go ahead. So, um, hi, I'm Aaron. I'm Noreen. Hello. And we are the Aurelia. So we usually sit here in front. 
Uh, Put your mic up here a bit so we okay. can hear you better. All right. So, so we just want to share some things um, about our faith, no? about our journey. We've been married for a long time. Um, How many years? <laughs> <laughs> you guys were confused kanina. I saw you. She knows. <laughs> After 10 years, it's been a long time. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> sige, dito ka na. We script so, kami. Kasi we practice the 10 minutes. But, um, sige, go ahead. Game. Okay, so, so we're... Well, I'm Noreen, his Aaron. We're blessed with two boys. Mm -hmm. We actually grew up together, uh, not together, but we grew up in a Christian community. Yeah. So we attend church, we, we have fellowship. And before we get married, we, we actually in the same church. Ah. So we, atten we are attending the same church, but we don't know each other yet. So we met in June of 2011. We became a couple in August. Um, Closer mic, but we can hear uh, better, I right? proposed uh, March of 2012, got married. December of 2012. Wow. And our relationship, I would say it has always been so good. And God is faithful as we know He is. He provided, guided, and secured our family. So why are we here? Um, so during that time, when we got married, so we made some rules. Because we've known each other for a year. So, to make sure that we will have a good relationship, we made some rules. One, I remember this very distinctly because we both are driving. So, I told her, if you're going to drive and someone will join you in the car, if it's the opposite sex, you make him ride at the back. Uh -huh. That's the first rule. And it applies, up, of course, with me. And then, um, then, what is the rule? Uh, we will always pray together, mm -hmm. and then we will not let, um, we will not sleep without closing any disagreements. Uh -huh. uh, we also have the rule that we will have a devotion, and then we need to have small groups. So these are, I would say, we operate in works, no? Because we need to agree that we will do this, this, and this. Uh -huh. Okay? So I'll pause on that and go. So amidst all of the good things, so Aaron mentioned that it was all good. Yeah. yeah. So the journey was good. So amidst all the good things that are happening, actually the enemy used that. Um, they use it for us to be complacent and eventually do things according to what we see fit. So he mentioned that we have several rules. And aside from that, we also believed in the norms the world says. So example, um, it's okay to get jealous at at, it means that we still love each other. It's like that. Um, it's okay to have misunderstanding. It's just we're two different people and that we're still in the adjustment period. It's okay also to accept that Aaron is sarcastic because he's like that. <laughs> it's also okay to, for Aaron to, uh, to adjust to me because I am sensitive. And for finances, as long as we put in for the home budget, Whatever is left is mine, and whatever left on his salary is his. Mm. So that's what happened in our finances. Mm. And also, as we go along, we had kids, right? We have kids. Mm. So all eyes on the kids, all, uh, all um, decisions for the kids. Yeah. Because we said that we want to build memories for them. They're, mm. they're kids. It's, you know, Priority. they're, they're, um, they're going to grow up later on. Mm. So, so like. So we tried what to think. Um, we tried what we think will help us in our journey. So we joined small group, tried to have a Bible study as a couple, and remind each other to have daily devotions. It looks good, right? Mm. But the outcome is the opposite of what we are expecting. So in the small group, one is growing, but the other one is just attending. In Bible studies. Sino yun? <laughs> <laughs> Sino daw? Sino yung growing? Sino yung hindi? <laughs> So, in the Bible studies, we start it exactly, excitedly. So, we both are very excited to Bible study together. We had dates. We set dates. Like, on Wednesdays, we'll go on, like, a breakfast okay. date to have Bible study. So, lovey lovey pa kami in the, at the start. But in the end, we're fighting. Mm. <laughs> we are fighting. Mm. And then, when someone asks us about, when someone, for example, I ask Aaron about his devotion, <laughs> he gets agitated. Or me as well, right? Mm. It's like, it's, 
there's there's division in us. Mm -hmm. So in, even in finances, we somehow believe in the lie that we cannot have more money because the temptation is too big to, to resist. And we misunderstood a lot of things in a lot of truth in verses. Mm -hmm. like, this, um, like the Lord supplies all our needs and He is sufficient. Like, hanggang dun lang siya. So, mind you that we are not fighting. We don't like dramas in our relationship. We are just, we are happy. We are happy with our kids. You can, for those who have known us, we are okay. Because we have, one, we have our faith in Jesus. And we are Christians. And Christians, we believe that there's no drama. Kasi you pray in the, at night and then you sleep together. That's it. Right? But apparently, that no drama feeling, that feeling of always happy. There are things that are hidden. Mm. Kasi there are some feelings that you don't talk about, uh, especially about faith. Kasi nga, even though we are both Christians, there are things that we don't would like to discuss because it ends up in fighting. So we just, uh, there, there's a hidden wall mm. that's been building na hindi mm. namin alam. And then, so complacency brought us into not knowing in the end, we adopted some of the world's viewpoints on marriage. Jealousy, it's okay, dung early. Then eventually, mawawalain because you have kids, then the attention will be shifted to the kids. So it's okay, that's what we thought before. Mm. And then, uh, division through individualism. We didn't realize that we are having that division. Na what's yours is yours, what's mine is mine. But we are happy, we're a family of Christians. Um, then, all belief system and just getting by were some of the things of the enemy threw on us. So we begin to slowly divide in spiritual seeking. You do listen to your, um, to your devotions and then I'll have my own small groups. Um, we will, our finances, we will have a common budget and then I'll decide on the big things, you decide on the small things. Or you decide on everything. I'll just say, I decided on it. Mm. <laughs> no, but it's true, diba? Sometimes, mm. okay, okay, this is our decision. But when the wife says, no, this, is, this will be our plan. To avoid the confrontation, okay, go ahead. That's what you want. Uh, it, it happened. Diba, man? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, so the pivotal point in our relationship. So we think all of these are normal in a relationship. But somehow we feel that there's a strain. We did not pay attention to these lies. We fight when we discuss about faith. We, write, we remember we are Christians and then we fight when we have our own devotion. We realize we have huge debt because uh, uh, we have our separate. When you combine, we are already in debt. Um, even if we are together, there are things that we avoid and we don't talk about to maintain peace at home. Peace. peace. Yes. Ako pa rin, no? Quote, unquote. Yeah. <laughs> so we knew there's something missing. And during the pandemic, I had my high school friends, uh, we set up a virtual small group for us to invite the pre-believers. That's what we call them. So to invite them and then um, talk about uh, faith. And then Rin has her own um, Now Faith Is, which he's, she's always forcing me to watch. And I forcing always resist. You, huh? Forcing you, because I have my small group at the same time. Eh, kaya lang yung small group ko, supposedly 8, they start at 9 or 10 because we are global. Eh? There are people in the North America. So while I'm waiting, napapapanood ako ng outfit it is. Pero I'm not telling Noreen because she will be happy. <laughs> <laughs> so you are Always watching resist. secretly. Yes. yes. But so I we have our own... But I knew that because one day you said, oh, hi, Aaron and Noreen. Mm. And ah. then I was not watching that. I just watched the replay. So I go, huh. Someone mm. watched. Uh -oh. yeah. <laughs> we have our own separate rooms at home. She has her own office. I have mine. And we don't usually talk until it's evening. Na. So, so there. And then, um, so during that time, those are the, during the pandemic, that's how we are being fed with the word. Go ahead. Yeah. So then one day when Aaron was driving home, we usually talk. Ganun naman eh. I mean, it's normal. G mm. I mean, ganun eh. So mm. we were talking on the phone and then we're talking about make room for the spirit. After the discussion, it was 
a very light discussion. And Aaron was saying about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit moving in our lives. Holy Spirit working in our lives. And then afterwards, um, there was, after the discussion, there, there was literally a, we felt like a wall crumbled. Mm. Wall crashed down. Mm. And then we prayed as a couple. It was, it was also for us a revelation. Wow, anong nangyari? Mm. Parang, Parang hindi kami nag And then we're like talking one language. We're speaking the same. Mm. And then we prayed. We asked for forgiveness. And then we received forgiveness right there and then. Mm. Um, mm. It was what we knew spiritually. Something's changed. Mm. So coming from how we operate uh, in the early, st- early years of our marriage, we operate by works. Now we operate by the Spirit. Wow. So, um, Spirit-led, that's, how, that's what we call it. Now. Um, so soon after, things get better. Mm. There, are, there, was a lot of, um, there were a lot of revelations from the Lord in our marriage. The Lord revealed that we are one. So, the principle kanina, of um, unity. unity. Mm. And then, we are not His and hers, but together. Mm. And the yung her, me, but we are one. Mm. Understanding this truth helps us to be united in every aspect of our lives. Mm. Uh, whether it's a small or big decisions assigned to whoever or either one of us, the decision is always the decision that we agree upon. So, law of agreement. The law of agreement. So, again, as mentioned by Aaron, there's no his or her money. Everything is the Lord's and we are called to be a good um, steward of it. Um, we are to seek the Lord together. At least now we're reading the same, the same devotions. We're speaking the same. We're like talking the same discussions. And when I ask him, what's your devotion? Oh, he gladly says. Wow. I, I mean, tells me what, what it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so um, we actually also had visions and plans together. Because mm-hmm. before, parang corning corning siya sa ano. Diba, mahal ko? Sa, sa plan and vision. And ako naman, yung tipong, I, I, I write down, I pray, I, 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 I put, you know, the visions there and all. But right now, mas siya pa yung, naging, yung excited kesa sa akin. She posted to uh, the whole family <laughs> that every December 31, we will gather and have that discussion of the purpose. And for us to have peace, I will tell all her siblings, sige, sabi ni ate, you do it. So we all do it. <laughs> so, so actually, when, when, when that happened also, God revealed to us the purpose of our marriage. We have, sep- as mentioned earlier, we have purpose even from the start. But this time, the purpose is actually together. Mm. And it's actually the heart, we both have the heart pala for couples. Mm. And that's why God told us, okay, you, 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 we have now a court of three strands ministry. We have couples there. And then the, the goal of that is actually to, for, for, for everyone to understand God's design for marriage mm. and how each couple can walk according to how they are, what they are called. Amen. Malapit na. Sorry. Malapit na. Malapit na. <laughs> we practiced this six minutes, but love you so <laughs> Some relationships may seem good, but just like how the enemy crept into our marriage. It was subtle. We didn't realize. Because we are Christians, but we are doing everything yeah. for the Lord. Uh, he masked good things into undoubtedly bad results. The enemy never wanted unity. He wants division in the marriage. For the couple is divided, everything else is. The agreement will not be present. Each purpose not realized. And the continuous harmonious walk of the Lord is him. So our prayer is that May we all be united in marriage, with agree to God's plan for us, and ultimately walk as one with the Lord. So let's do all things in love. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to share with you the uh, the verse that for for uh, for a chord of yeah mm-hmm. a chord of three strands. It's from Ecclesiastes four twelve. Mm-hmm. It says, "And if someone overpowers one person, two can resist him." A cord of three strands is not easily broken. Thank you, and we hope that you bl- you are blessed with how God worked in our marriage. And all praises and glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Aaron and Noreen. Were you blessed by that? Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. 
Wow. So the importance of you walking together, right? Even though you're both Christians, still, you could be believing two different things as Christians. So watch for that. Um, where are we now? Okay. So let me just check the time. I think you guys are going to be talking about roles. And you guys still okay? Uh, we're going to be, just so you know, we're going to be taking a break at 545. So we have uh, 55 minutes uh, to discuss a few more things. So Mike and Wang, can you come up to talk about roles and roles of husband and wives?